Hey everybody, this is Nick Baldwin, and today I'm being joined by UFC bandmate Louis so- Louis Smolka, who returns to action this weekend at UFC Fight Night in Las Vegas against Vince Morales. Louis, how's it going? Pretty good. Just getting my hair cut, doing all the pre-fight stuff. There you go. The, the haircut is how you know you're back in UFC Fight Week routine, I guess, hey? Yeah, that's like the only time I cut my hair, dude. Look at my unibrow, bro. It's pretty bad. It's hilarious. Are you in Vegas already, or are you still back home in California? I'm still in California. Um, when we get in, they're going to quarantine us for like 24 hours or something. So, and then I immediately got to take pictures because I don't have any Venom pictures. Right. Like I can't, I can't get my hair cut there, I don't think. It's going to be like, it's going to be hard. Yeah, too much going on. Or do you head out tomorrow? I'm sorry? Yeah, we're headed do out tomorrow morning. Head out tomorrow? Okay. Um, wh- what is it like getting back into the, the swing of things? You've been away for a year um, longest layoff of your pro career. What's it all like sort of getting back in, into fight week and you're, you're a few days away from your first fight in, in quite a while? I feel pretty good. Um, it's been a long layoff. Uh, it's not really like what I wanted. I got sick. Or, uh, well, I got sick. I got hurt. Um, had had a couple problems that kept me out. So, you know, that wasn't really ideal, but yeah. Um I'm happy to be back. I'm happy to be fighting. Worked really hard for this camp. I I feel the best I've ever felt, and I'm ready to go. Did you miss the fight week routine? I did miss the the fight week stuff. I really wanted to get get in there. I've been working super hard, man. Um, and I'm tired. <laughs> I, I want some payoff. Yeah. Um, why were you out for a whole year? As you said, you got sick in July. Had to pull out of the fight. Um, but beyond that, like, is, is there anything else that was going on or, or was that kind of the, I, uh, the main like thing? A, yeah, I got, I got injured earlier too in the year around January. So that kept me out for a while. We like kept me out for like six months as part of like protocol. And then, um, yeah, I started, uh, working again. Uh, and then we, we, we took the O'Malley fight and then I got, I got pulled out of that one. So yeah, it's just been rough, man. Rough luck. Has it been frustrating? A little bit, yeah, but I'm telling myself everything happens for a reason. That's how I deal with things. Yeah, and, and you're back now, so I guess that's, you, you know, or have you been able to sort of put that behind you mentally and just sort of focus on the fight and, and the fact that you're back and, and you're healthy yeah. and you're good to go now? Yeah, it's fight time, baby. Yeah. <laughs> um, time. Do you... Go. <laughs> do you do you anticipate any sort of ring rust? As I mentioned, longest layoff of your career. You're not used to sitting out for a year. Um, and, and is Maybe, there anything you've done? Not really. No. It, is there anything you've done I mean, in your I've camp? I've been training the whole time. I've been getting ready to fight the whole time. I've been working the whole time. Same as usual. Besides, when is, you get older, time passes uh, faster, right? So it doesn't feel like ring rust to me. You know what I'm saying? That's fair. Is there anything you've done in your training camp to ensure that you won't be rusty, or is it just a matter of keeping in the gym, training all the time, as you said? I don't think it's. A, I don't know. I I feel good, dude. Um, I'm ready to go. Uh, there's nothing really. This doesn't feel any different than any of the other times that I've done it, so I feel good. Okay. Um, it, 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 as I said, is that just because you have stayed in the gym? Do you think like because you've been training despite the time off? Probably. That's probably what it is. Getting ready like a couple different times, trying to get into fight shape and stuff. It's not like I was just sitting down, like getting like atrophying, you know, like I wasn't just sitting around with like a, like a trying to nurse a, a injury for too long. It was, yeah. uh, yeah. Like, like, plus I'm always training around things too, if that makes sense. What do you I mean guess. by that? If you're like injured, training. you train around it. Sure. <laughs> Okay. Um, a lot of people will say that, you know, you, you're making your biggest improvements in the, in, in, in the gym, like when you don't have a fight scheduled. Where would you say you've sort of grown the most over the past year? Um, or, or, or do you feel you've made big improvements? Yeah, I feel like I've off? improved a lot, honestly. Um, I feel like my size is good. I feel like I, uh, I feel pretty explosive, I feel pretty fast. I feel good. I feel good everywhere. Um, I'm not really sure where you'll see it. Every fight's different, and whatever happens, happens, and I'll just go from there. Yeah. Um, as I'm we said, you're... Exactly the same. <laughs> well, that, yeah, fair enough. Um, as, as you said, you were supposed to fight Sean O'Malley in July. That fight couldn't happen. You had a staff infection that forced you out of that one. 
Um, that was a big fight just because Sean O'Malley has a lot of hype behind him. He has a lot of support behind him. Were you extra upset about that cancellation just given what you would have gained by beating a guy like Sean O'Malley? A little, but, you know, it's a tough fight. He's a hard fight. We had to make sure I was okay, you know. Um, I don't really do well fighting on antibiotics and stuff. It was pretty bad. Uh, honestly, I have videos of, like, of, of having a deal with it after for like like six months after no, not six like six weeks after maybe maybe two months after so yeah it was probably i don't know it's all for the best it's all for the best you're gonna see the best little smoke on saturday and it's all for the best how difficult was it dealing with that staff infection back in the summer like oh, on it was scale pretty of rough dude stuff? yeah bro like they like okay, so i went to the urgent or like i went to the urgent care they looked at my infection and were immediately like, you need antibiotics right now. And so they put me on a bunch of different stuff. They put me on like, um, they put me on an IV that they said had two different antibiotics and something else in it that I can't remember. And then they put me on like a couple of different pills like and like an anti-inflammatory. And then that didn't work. So then they put me on like this third pill that was like, that freaking destroyed my stomach. Like, it felt like my body wasn't digesting anything or absorbing any nutrients. Like, it was crazy, man. Like, at wow. one point, yeah, like, so I felt nauseous the whole time. Like, like, like my stomach was just constantly bloated. And then, so they gave, like, they gave me, um, what is it, like, uh, like, I, I don't know, but I guess it was just, like, indigestion. So I started throwing up, right? And, like, I'd eat my food maybe, like, an hour, an hour and a half before, but it came out, like, undigested. Like, it was like my stomach acid wasn't turning on. And then, so, I would, I, I threw up once, and, like, it all just came out, like, chewed up. It's pretty gross. Um, wow. Yeah, like, I was wondering if I should take, like, an, if I should take probiotics. But I was like, yo, I'm on an antibiotic and a probiotic. Does that, like, make it neutral? Like, is that going to cancel it? But I don't know. <laughs> Um, when you went into the ER, did you have any inkling whatsoever that would be nearly as serious as it was? A little bit, yeah. Like, that's what people were telling me. Like, I was going to, like, a couple of different people were, like, looking at it and like, bro, that is staff. And I was like, shut up. Like, I'm trying to have this be not something that's going to be an issue, you know? Like, I'm getting ready for the biggest fight of my life in, like, a, in, like, a week or two. Like, why are you telling me this? Don't tell me that. But, like... So I went into Doc Kessler's and like the guy sitting next to me is like, bro, that's staff. Like, that's bad, dude. And I was like, no, shut up. No, it's not. Like, don't tell me this. But like, so they eventually talked me into going to urgent care and they're like, oh yeah, that's really bad. And so this happened like literally just a week or two before the fight was scheduled, correct? Yeah. Yeah. That was like the Monday before or some, or not the Monday before. Like it was, um, yeah, two weeks out, I guess. Was there any hope on your side that you could stay in the fight or, or, or did you know when, when you knew how bad it was, did you know the fight just couldn't happen? I was still trying to make it happen, but then my team was like, bro, this is bad. Like your recovery time is long on this. Like this is like, this is like medically speaking, this is a really, really bad idea, you know? And yeah. so like they pulled me like last time I tried to do something like this, it didn't go well. So they're like, you're, you're out. I was like, oh. Do you hope the O'Malley fight gets rebooked one day? Yeah. Yeah. Do you um, I do, honestly. I have, like, weird feelings about it because it's, like, it's just, like, oh, yeah, it's supposed to be, like, a huge build-up. This is, like, my opportunity to, like, break through the mainstream or whatever. And then, um, yeah, but it's, like, at the same time, he's, like, the golden goose for, like, the unranked guys. So it's, like, if you fight him, you instantly kind of become, like, a, like a celebrity. So then you, uh, like, like, I feel bad, like, taking the opportunity from somebody else, if that makes sense. Like, that also is putting in work and in a relatively same position as me. Why would like, you, why do you feel bad I about that? To fight him. I didn't even get to fight him. Like, they gave me the opportunity. I didn't even get, like, they gave me Charlie's ticket and I freaking threw it away. 
So you just mean in the future you feel like because you had your chance and it, I mean, but the thing is you, like you couldn't control the cancellation. Like that was completely uh, yeah, know, out of here. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's why I'm like conflicted. So I'm like, do I look at it from that view or do I look at it as like, Oh yeah, this is like all part of like, there's a reason for everything type, like, like find meaning in God type thing, you know? Do you think the UFC will look to rebook it? He has a big fight with Paiva coming up the week after your fight. That could move him into the top 15, and then from there, he um, might just go I further up. Like, I would think it hinges on this fight, but maybe. Okay. Um, something you said in an interview earlier um, in, in your training camp is, is there was a bit of hesitation taking this fight with Vince Morales just because he's cousins with Ricky Simone, who trains, I believe, out of your gym. Um, why did you ultimately take this fight? Because the UFC said, bro, and if they said, you got to do it. <laughs> so there's nothing, no part of you that wanted to negotiate or ask for a different opponent? I tried, just... but it's kind of like, this is what they want. I don't know, man. This is what Jason, like, like, we got, like, negotiated into this freaking, um... hmm. Were you upset about it? Not really, like, I mean, it's kind of awkward, but at the same time, it's just business, you know, like, we've, like, at this, at this sport, at the highest level is, like, it's a really small community, there's not that many degrees of separation, so, like, this happens, I've had to do it before, and I don't like doing it, but if they tell me to do it, I, like, like, when the UFC tells you to do it, you kind of have to do it, you know, you don't really get to, like, tell them no. I mean, I guess you could have turned the fight down, but then that always, that, that doesn't always result in a good um outcome you know what i mean well like okay so like if you turn it down you got to give them a reason why so it's like why so they ask you why can't i book you right now and it's like oh are you sick are you scared are you like because if you're injured or something's like wrong with you like that's that's fine you know like that's just that's how it is you got to recover you got to be 100 percent. you know you got to be putting your best foot forward and like making a like 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 representing the sport well um representing the organization well but like they gotta match guys you know what i'm saying they gotta match people that are in similar situations similar records um you know similar like records in their division they gotta like they gotta figure out what's going on to see who's the best and so you can't be jamming up the machine can't be jamming up the brackets by constantly pulling out and picking and choosing you know it, sure. it, it, it's, it's hard for business it's hard for matchmaking it's hard to see where anything is really you know, from like a competitive aspect, it's hard to tell what's going on if everybody's doing that. And so do you train with Ricky regularly? Like, is he one of your main training partners? Kind of, yeah. Um, I've, I've trained with him for a while now. He always comes down. He'd always come down. So he's been coming down since I was in Hawaii. You know what I mean? Like, he would train with us in Hawaii because Tyson Nam went up to Oregon for a while and was training with him. So when Tyson came down, Ricky came down too. Um, yeah, so I've known Ricky, I don't even know how long. I want to say like four or five years at this point. And then, so like his fight to get into the UFC through LFA, I actually cornered him for that one. I actually like helped him with his striking and stuff because he did a good chunk of his camp in Hawaii and I just come up here to like to relocate teams. So I was helping him with his mix and stuff just because I kind of knew the system that he would probably have been shown, you know? So then I guess what would be the main issue with fighting Vince? Is it that you just feel like it's it would, just super it, it, uncomfortable. It, like I've seen him around. I know he's Ricky's cousin. Like well, I thought we always had a good rapport at like, at like any event or fights or like whatever we went to that we saw each other. We always had like a good rapport. You know, I was there when he had his debut against Song Dong in China. We were all in the sauna together. You know, it's just it's awkward, dude. Like I guess we'll all do it and you got to like try to stay professional, but it's awkward. So is it so? It's more so awkward because of the relationship you've had or, or built with Vince yourself, rather than the fact that it might put Ricky in in a bit of a, a weird spot too. Um, we've been messing with Ricky the entire time. Like I've been teasing him this entire time. <laughs> like he came to train with us. So I was like, we have a spy in the camp. There's a mole here. Like I've been I've been messing with him the entire time. Um, Alex Perez is out there right now too, because Ricky is or is one of his main training partners. I'm just teasing the crap out of Alex. All right. Um, well, I, I guess you know sometimes these things have to happen in MMA. That's the way it works out sometimes. 
yeah so i'm just like i'm just trying to have good spirits about it and like not like you know because if we're over here like complaining the entire time it's gonna jam everything up ruin time for everybody right whole event yeah. kind of sucks now if all like yeah like everybody's all upset now right so that's not fun that's not cool love you where do so you feel you... Way to pro- i'm sorry, sorry yeah, so like i'm just approaching it like like just whatever it is what it is like I'm just gonna not deal with it. We fight. We throw things at each other. We'll be cool after. Yeah. Um, how how far away from a top fifteen opponent do you think you are with a win on Saturday? If I win this one, I, I'm clo- depends on what happens because how you look during the fight matters too, right? Like, if I win a close decision. Mm, not not looking so good but if it's a banger of a fight and every both guys look good oh maybe you know but if it's like a boring fight where one guy is like laying and praying or we stare at each other the whole whole time and do nothing that doesn't look good that's not gonna be one that's not showing improvement in skills or showing technique you know what i mean yeah um, well, last thing, how do, how do you think you get the job done? Taking on Vince Morales, Saturday night, Las Vegas, UFC fight night. How does this fight end? I don't know, man. I'm prepared for all outcomes. Uh, I'm going to try to finish them. Uh, that's usually what I do, but uh, I think I'll look good in there. I think I'll keep my... I'm not sure, man. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna look to surprise you guys. I'm gonna see what he does, and we'll see, dude. I, I don't know. Oh, by the way, I was gonna ask. I, are you the first fight of the night? I think so. Yeah. How do you feel about that? I'm gonna be a home, bro. I'm gonna be back in California with you, me, and Lucy by like by eight o'clock. Damn. Maybe so you're not even staying the night there. Uh, it depends, dude. If it's a war, then I'm probably not driving home that night. But if I can get out of there, like, I'm going home, you know? I'm going to go home and see my kid, dude. So I guess you don't hate the card placement. I'm sorry? I said I, I guess you don't hate the card placement then. No, I don't. I'm, I'm fine with it. I mean, I'll move up. I'll move wherever, you know? It's it, it's The last couple times they had me, like, real low on the card, and then all of a sudden by the end of it, I'm, like, I'm, like, opening or, like, I'm at the bottom of the main card or I'm at, I'm sorry, I'm at the top of the prelims or I'm, like, opening the main card, you know? So, like, we'll see where we end up. But, like, this is a banger of a card, dude. This is is a Jose Aldo card, bro. Like, not to be that guy. This is a Jose Aldo card, dog. It's an honor just to be here. (laughs) Or it could end up, like, well, actually, I I don't want to say this, but, you know, Dublin, you ended up as the main event. Oh, dude, Crazy that'd be things wild. Happen. Yeah, see, you don't know what's going to happen, so I just don't really deal with it. Yeah, but I want to see Rob Fawn and Josie Aldo fight, so no offense, but I, I, I hope you're not the main event come Saturday night. <laughs> Honestly, me too. I just want to watch Aldo fight again, dude. He looked so good the last one. I was like, wow, bro, WEC never does that. <laughs> yeah. Well, Lewis, thanks so much for the time. As always, appreciate it. Uh, good luck with the rest of the fight week, and best of luck to you in the fight. All right, Nick. All right. Thanks, Lewis.